Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sid. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Sid underscore Dwyer. And in today's video, I want to talk about the influencer to Christian pipeline. And I'm not talking about the kind of treasure paters, culture or religion hopping to try and stir up some controversy. I'm talking about the intense Trump supporting Bible thumping Christian transition. And I know that the cases that I'm going to talk about don't represent all Christians by any means. I know there's plenty of Christians that are passionate about their faith and are totally harmless about it. And yeah, ordinarily, there isn't really that much shocking about being a Christian. But in this video, I'm going to talk about the influencers who have found their way to Christ through unexpected or shocking ways and share some problematic views. Not all of their views are problematic, but some of the things that they promote as a Christian do kind of fall under the category of problematic. But yeah, if you've ever wondered what happened to some of these influencers on their path to Christ, then this is the video for you. So firstly, I want to talk about Woe Vicky. If you don't know, she's basically somebody who got big on the internet from trolling. And Vicky's biggest troll was claiming to be black. I'm tired of telling y'all niggas, I'm black. She would say slurs, wear traditionally black hairstyles, and just try and emulate their culture. She gained a lot of followers from making it these sort of controversial claims, to the point where a huge YouTuber, Rice Gum, made a diss track about her. And that blew her up even more. And I mention all of that because she has seen the rewards of making a scene or doing controversial things on the internet. So when Vicky supposedly became a Christian, it was taken with a grain of salt. The first kind of indication that we got that Vicky was becoming a Christian was when she got baptized in June 2021. But before that, she had also referenced God and Jesus in smaller ways. Like in March 2021, she was on the Unfiltered podcast and she was asked what her criteria for a boyfriend was. And she says that one of her criteria is being God-fearing. God-fearing? It's like, okay, so let's say like, um, you want to go out and, and kill somebody. Right. And, um, but you're not going to do that. Cause if you do that, you know, God going to be mad at you. Right. right. Or like, let's say like you want to, um, fight somebody or you impatient or, and you want to cut somebody out when you're like, okay, God wouldn't want me to do that. But any time before that, her life was pretty much just consumed with beefing with a bad baby. On her channel, she's talked about her on and off again relationship with God. She first took interest in religion when she was a child, when her father's girlfriend would go to church. Ever since I was young, I used to always want to go to church. My dad used to have a girlfriend and she used to always go to church. She had her own family. I used to always go with them. My dad would never go to She also admired her friend's family growing up who never said any swear words and were saving themselves for marriage. And then none of them had to merge and none of them cussed. And, you know, I used to be like, huh? That was weird. Like, they, what? But it was so cool. And, and this encouraged her to go celibate for four years. After that, she would pray for God to put a husband in her life. I used to always pray and say, God, please put my husband in my life, please put my husband in my life. And a man did come into her life, but it turned out to be a very toxic relationship. So she prayed it to God again, and that time it was to get this man out of her life. I prayed, I asked God, I said, God, um, please help me get out of this situation. I'm, I might not have the courage to break up with him. But let him break up with me. Guess what? The next day, y'all, he broke up with me. And then after that, she sees a guy named John Gabbana talk about Christianity. And he's someone who's had a similar Christianity journey as Vicky. Years ago, he was known for recording himself stealing and running away. He also got involved with a lot of illicit substances and actually spent time in jail for gun and drug charges. And it was actually in his jail cell when he was introduced to God by one of his cellmates. So much like Vicky, he also had an unexpected turn to Christ. And this is the kind of guy she wanted, right? She wanted a God-fearing boyfriend. But as much as she was interested in him, she did not reach out to him because of something that was in the Bible. But I never hit him up. I'm like, if he want me, he gonna hit me up because the Bible says, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. So I'm not about to put it down, but if you, you know what I'm saying? And then he eventually slid into her DMs and they started dating. Because he had been practicing Christianity a couple of years before Vicky, he helped her with her relationship with God. He's helped my relationship with God um, get closer. And then she decided to get baptized again in December 2021, roughly six months after the first time that she was baptized. And this time it was in the same place where her boyfriend John was baptized. My friend got baptized here, you know him? 
Who? Um, John. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's my boo. That's your boo. Yeah. And one of her beliefs as a Christian is that she can't have friends that don't believe in God. You gotta pick a side. You're either here or you're there. You're in the world or you're with God. So when you're with God, you have to have friends and people around you that know God too. You can't have friends that's in the world. Like, and I mean, that kind of sounds like a bit culty, right? She also says that at one point she knew better than to have friends who weren't of God, but she didn't want to be alone. It's like, I'll be going around people and be like, dang, I know better though, but it's like, I mean, I didn't want to be alone and I didn't want to have no friends, so I was compromising. But and Lastly, she emphasizes not to compromise and that sometimes you just have to be alone for a little while. Trust God, you know, sometimes you got to be alone for a little while and then, you know, God going to put the right people in your life, but don't compromise. Do not compromise. But yeah, the kind of content that she posts on her YouTube channel now is totally different from the content that she used to post. Nowadays, it's pretty much just casual vlogs of her going about her day, not continuous attempts to bait her audience into having some kind of reaction to something she did. So yeah, things have changed pretty drastically. She's all of a sudden praying mid-sentence. Where this name came from? Is it my real name? Um... Dear Jesus, please allow me to speak in, in the church. She talks about how only happiness can come from God. Prayer, joy, and happiness can only come from God or Jesus. I just wanted to see if I could still twerk. And just a whole lot of general preaching. A man is supposed to love a woman the way Jesus loves the church. Yeah. And again, there's nothing wrong about being passionate about your faith. And even though she does preach some pretty questionable stuff, I mainly just wanted it to show the big shift in her content. And now I want to talk about Lo Anthony. And I'm sure you all saw this coming because his case is kind of the most publicized and shocking. So Anthony first gained attention on the internet when this clip of him went viral. Calling all the basic bitches. And this clip of him propelled him pretty far forward in his influencer journey because his YouTube success only continued to grow from there. He also grew a pretty big social network with other celebrities and YouTubers. He became friends with people like Madison Beer and Ariana Grande and her brother Frankie Grande and so many more. He was also in a movie with with Timothy Chalamet and Lily Rabe. So he really cemented himself in the celebrity and influencer space. And something that really drew his fans to him and made people want to support him along this journey was the fact that he was one of the first big online personalities that was out and proud about being gay. For so many people, it was and is a huge struggle to be open about their sexuality, but for Anthony, didn't seem to be a big deal at all. Because of that, he was featured in YouTube's 2013 Show Your Pride video, and he was referenced in the documentary Do I Sound Gay as an inspiring young person. It is inspiring to see that some young people are able to be and sound like themselves. And the world is listening. If two people love each other and want to prove it by putting a ring on it, let those bitches do it. Does it matter, like, if they're the same gender? And he also advocated for gay marriage on his channel. Some people say that same-sex marriage is illegal because it is a sin and goes against God. I strongly disagree. God, the Bible, or any of the commandments should not be used to determine law. The First Amendment states that it is prohibited to make any law respecting any establishment of religion, appending the free exercise of religion, abridging the freedom of speech, etc. One thing that I thought was worth noting was an interview that he did with RuPaul. Ru recognizes his unique spirit and hopes that he keeps it. You have this love of life that I think is brilliant. I just hope that you can keep it. They are going to try to come for you, and I'm sure they already have. Yeah, I'm not going to let anyone push it away. They're going to try, Anthony. They're going to try. You just have to stay strong in your conviction of, of who you are, you know? But unfortunately, he eventually vanished from YouTube and then reappeared in 2020, seemingly having lost that love for life that Rue once recognized in him. He deleted his old YouTube content and started uploading videos about his religious journey. The first video he posted in this genre was titled, Why Christ? my testimony to Jesus. He changed his profile picture to a picture of Jesus and his description box was filled with all sorts of 
Bible verses. He did eventually end up making all of the videos that I'm going to talk about private. I was able to find copies of most of them, but this first one I wasn't able to, so I'm just going to talk about it. So in his first video back, he says, I am feeling a big love and I can't hold it in any longer. I've been feeling a shift in my life for a while and I can only thank Christ for that. Jesus found me and Jesus has known me for a while. And then after that, he goes on to talk about his relationship with God growing up. He refers to his relationship with God not being right. So we fell down a rabbit hole of replacing God with things like views and attention and meet and greets. And what he describes as the big bang of his teenage life, discovering drugs. And because those things were causing him so much grief, he came to this conclusion. I needed love and I thought I could provide myself with that love. I understand now God can only provide that love. And then his next video was uploaded a few days later. It was titled, Jesus Delivers, Surviving Sexuality. And this video was definitely seen as the most problematic video out of the bunch of Christian focused videos that he uploaded. He pretty much denounces his sexuality in this video. He talks about his first girlfriend when he was a kid and how it was a nice romantic relationship. And in third grade, I had my first relationship with a female and um, it was exciting, it was passionate, it was, um, it was romantic, even for elementary school, even for third grade. Then he talks about his first relationship with a boy as a kid and he does not look at it with the same kind of fondness. And then they kind of did the thing that all kids do and kind of like pushed it and nudged it and kind of like made a deal out of it in the group chat, kind of saying like, oh, what's gonna happen when we hang out at the ice cream place, like all these things and kind of pushing us to like do something together, which was the weirdest thing looking back on it. It was just weird, it's just weird. But yeah, so we went to get ice cream and I don't know why I'm showing these details. Anyways, we just held hands that day and we became boyfriend and boyfriend. Throughout the relationship, I literally probably spoke 20 words to this kid in real life. But through Facebook, obviously that's when I opened up because I was comfortable at home. But when it came down to being with him, actually with him, I did not know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I didn't, nothing felt comfortable, nothing felt right but the attention was what kept me there. I just wanted to feel validated through him. He also talks about how he was forcing his same sex attraction, comparing it to trying to fit a circle into a square. All this time I was, like I said, trying to fit a circle into a square, trying to find God's love in all these other things. It's no coincidence that through pursuing my same-sex attraction, I was also addicted to alcohol. I was also addicted to weed. I was also trying hallucinogenics. I was also addicted to money. I was also addicted to views. I was addicted to attention. I was addicted to opportunity, opportunity that earthly pleasures brought to me. He also mentions how he is a celibate now. And my call to Christian celibacy. A lot of people thought for him to feel this way now that he must have been a victim of conversion therapy. He was saying phrases and sharing beliefs that are directly linked to conversion therapy tactics, like him repeating the phrase same-sex attraction and him believing that his sexual orientation is linked to childhood trauma and addiction. And then the next video he uploaded was titled Conversion Therapy and God's Truth. In that video, he actually apologized for the hurt that he caused. First and foremost, I apologize for the hurt I caused with my videos <sighs> regarding my celibacy, regarding my sobriety, regarding being saved by Lord Jesus Christ. He also denies the conversion therapy claims. You went to conversion camp, didn't you? No. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. And he addresses his celibacy and the issues that people had with it. My celibacy is not aimed to target any minority, and my celibacy is not a way of saying, look, I am more holy. 
And yeah, that is about it for Lo Anthony. He later deleted his YouTube channel and his Twitter account, but kept his Instagram, which features a similar content to his YouTube channel. So now I want to talk about Meredith Foster. And she was a beauty and lifestyle vlogger with over 4 million subscribers. She's been a Christian her whole life, but it wasn't until the last five years that she started to make it a focus on her YouTube channel. So we first got glimpses of Meredith's love for Christ in just some of her normal videos. She'd insert a shout out to God in her videos any chance she got. Which is fine, if that's what she wants to talk about on her channel, then she can. But it did alienate a lot of her subscribers, because that is not what a lot of people subscribe to her to hear. But before actively mentioning God in her videos, she would describe herself as a lukewarm Christian. I would say I was a lukewarm Christian, that's how I can describe it. So that's why we didn't get a whole lot of religious takes in her older content. But when she upgraded from a lukewarm Christian to a scolding hot Christian, there were some questionable views that she perpetuated. She was spotted liking pro-life and pro-Trump Instagram posts on a Christian Instagram page. She also held a gathering during the pandemic and posted it to her Instagram, putting a Bible quote as the caption. One of the more fleshed out topics under the Christian umbrella that she subscribes to is purity culture. And that is basically the culture that surrounds the sentiment saving yourself till marriage. And in my opinion, there's nothing really wrong with wanting to save yourself until marriage or saving yourself until you've reached some kind of commitment level in your relationship. But there's more of an issue with the culture that surrounds that. What if I want to have sex before I get married? Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. And you'll probably take with you your spouse and one or more of your children. Keeping yourself pure is important. And so you keep that on your finger and it's a daily reminder that you're at this point you're married to the Lord. She's deleted a lot of content from her channel. She was hit with a wave of hate when her fans found out that her mom was at the Capitol riots. So she removed a lot of her more Christian focused content because it was then being seen as hateful knowing that her family supported someone so hateful. But yeah, I say that because she's pretty much removed all of her videos where she talks about purity culture. But I was able to find bits and pieces of her now deleted videos on YouTube. And she also has a faith focused podcast and it is something that she talks about a lot on there. But I'm now waiting till I'm in marriage to have sex because I believe marriage is a covenant and God wants us to have sex in marriage and not outside of it. Essentially, other than fear mongering, the reason why there's an issue with purity culture is because of the shame that it can make people feel. For myself, it was taken very seriously and I was so ashamed of myself and, and at times suicidal because of the amount of shame I felt. You know, she's the one sort of espousing shame ideas. You know, the idea that there's this deity who's disappointed in you if you have sex before marriage. Like that is a very shame-based view of sex and shame-based views of sex lead to bad sex which is why so many Christian marriages are, are bad really, because shame-based views of sex aren't healthy and don't lead to good sexual relationships. And these kinds of intense views are what separates a lot of Christians. Earlier, as we know, she described herself as a lukewarm Christian, and that is a term used by more devoted Christians to describe Christians who may only go to church every once in a while. And the term lukewarm Christians is used to try and guilt other Christians into being more Christian and doing things like joining in on purity culture. So yeah, if some Christians don't like other Christians for being less devoted, then it's pretty clear that Christianity is a pretty divisive thing. So it's really no surprise that a large part of Meredith's audience tuned out when she started talking about Christianity. So anyway, now I want to give an honorable mention to someone named Staten Harry. He's not exactly an influencer, but the virality of his case inspired me to make this video, so I thought I'd talk about him. Basically, several years ago, he went viral for doing a lip sync to Alejandro by Lady Gaga. You'll probably recognize it. Hey, monsters. What's new? Today, I'm going to be lip syncing to, to Ale Alejandro, Ale Alejandro. He also did a number of other lip syncs to her other songs. And then in July of this year, it was discovered and then revealed on Twitter that he had stopped worshipping Lady Gaga and was worshipping someone new. 
Jesus Christ. His YouTube channel where he talked about God was titled Staten LW Spreading God's Grace. And this was shocking because in his lip sync videos, he wasn't just enjoying Gaga's music, he was also spreading the message behind her brand, which was a message of acceptance and loving yourself. I love you. Be proud, be kind, and be yourself because you were born this way. Bye! And when I saw that, I was like, oh well, I'm sure there's plenty of other good messages in the Bible that I'm sure he's probably spreading. But I know that's not the truth because someone found a comment of his that he made on a Christian video titled, She Turned Away From The LGBT Lifestyle. That video was about a person who detransitioned after they found God. And this was Staten's comment. Coming from someone who used to be completely part of that community and supported it 100%, this is amazing. God is so good. So yeah, clearly he has completely abandoned that message of love and acceptance. He also said in a comment that he listens to normal music now, like Taylor Swift. And in the description box to one of his videos, he wrote how Gaga's birthday is now a demonic day to him. And since Staten's new religious channel was discovered, his comments were completely flooded. So then he limited the comments, but then later deleted his channel entirely. But someone on Twitter did find a similarity between his old videos and his new videos, so he's to hoping he one day returns to his true self. So yeah, anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drink water, be nice to animals. Let's take a moment of silence for everyone who has to deal with Karens. And I'll see you in my next video.